Welcome back. Well, yes, indeed, uh, Dr. Nick Idoko joins us. He's a security consultant. Uh, yes, yeah, so you can see, I know, couldn't see it in that picture. Thank you for coming on this morning. Thank you very much. Well, looking at this particular matter, it's uh, frustrating and upsetting uh, to a lot of people what happened in Plateau. But then, having heard the directive and the response from the president about this matter, uh, are you optimistic or what's your response about what you expect afterwards? I'm not optimistic. Why not? Because I see the president's reaction as um, something typical of Nigeria. What we are always that? reactionary to things. We do not put a plan in place or mechanisms in place to contain situations. When you deal with conflicts, you must go back to the history of the conflict and look at those um, narratives and be able to identify gaps and prospects before you can deal with conflict holistically. It's not when issues come up, you react. Then you order the military and the police to put a halt to violence. Then there is another cycle of violence. We have not done anything. But, but they said that, uh, don't forget, Plateau had been peaceful uh, yeah. before now. They had, uh, I think they call it Plateau, they had peace agency in the state. They had a curfew. They, got, they were me having several meetings until recently we saw this. So doesn't that suggest that they were getting something right before now? Uh, I believe uh, something was going on. There are so many funding agencies, you know, that have moved into Plateau since the violence started. And a lot of work has been going on, you know, to be fair. But then, uh, this sudden resurgence of violence tells you that when you do not tackle conflict at the roots, there are six, you know, uh, factors that lead to conflict. And if you want to deal with conflict, you must look at those factors up to the point of resolution. You haven't even finished dealing with conflict up to the point of resolution. You have to move to the point of transformation, where you now look at those issues that give rise to the conflict, those causes that give rise to the conflict in the first place. Once you deal with those causes, those fundamental causes, you haven't done anything. So what would the causes be in this case? Yeah. Well, I, when I talk about history, in conflict analysis, why do we have such conflicts? Number one. The issue of settlership, indigenship, oh. is there. You must deal with the, that issue. Then you have the issue of the herdsmen now. You have the issue of insurgency. And then you have the issue of mistrust. Nigerians don't trust their governments. And you must do something to build confidence. We haven't been doing anything to build confidence. But this particular case in Joss yes. is as a result of, from the reports, going by the reports, yeah. is as a result of uh, a Fulani child that was killed yes. and his body was found headless yes. in a shallow grave yes. and then the uh, it was alleged that the Fulanese now launched an attack yes. at night on, the, on that community. How do we begin to understand this kind of dynamics because repeatedly attacks are carried out at night not during the day and this has exemplified itself again in Joss. What kind of strategy would you say we have not been able to adopt to be able to check attacks at night? Yeah, well, it's, you don't isolate attacks at night as the major concern. With this reprisal attack, they found a flanny boy killed and headless. The body was found headless and then demobilized and attacked at night. And this community that attack was launched upon, you used to be in a very peaceful com community. And then there has resurgence of violence, 29 dead and several others injured. This is just a case that tells you that something fundamental has not been done. I believe that the whole nation requires a peace architecture that can be tapped into to deal with all these issues in various communities. Well, the issue of Plateau has been on for quite some time now. And I think government is trying its best, but its best is not the best. 
What, what if there's an, another attack, for instance? Yeah. And, I'm sorry. If there is another attack yeah. again in Joss, yeah. or should I say, let me rephrase that. Do you foresee that another attack could happen in Joss now that the army, who were the ones who were deployed to that area, know that Joss is still volatile? If there's another attack, what then could you say the army's role is? Or should it go to the police? Well, the president ordered the army and the police, let me say the military and the police. Now, it shows that the police cannot actually contain this kind of violence. The police has failed. Now, that is why you're calling the military. The military ordinarily shouldn't uh, have a role in this kind of, uh, you know, uh, situation. But it has gone beyond what the police can do. Therefore, the military is calling. But what the, po the point I'm making is, you don't deal with issues as they happen. You have to have a template. You have to have an architecture of dealing with the issues holistically what kind of at the root. Well, you've, you've used, the, first of all, you said there needs to be a security plan. Then you said a peace architecture. Yes. Is it going to be a blanket peace architecture or security plan? Or should each state formulate its own peace architecture and security plan? How do you want it? How do you suggest it? Well, it's not a blanket a thing. The peace architecture, we look at the history of conflict in Nigeria and identify those issues that are unique to communities across Nigeria. In the case of Plateau, they need to do a study of what the causes are that lead to resurgence of violence each time there's an incident. The fact that the Fulani boy was killed shouldn't have led to this kind of attack. You know, in other communities, it's just normal. They would gather together and look at the particular case that led to the Fulani boy being killed. And then it could be resolved without this kind of reprisal attack. Because when you were asking if there could be another attack, I was just thinking it is possible. And that was why the, the president said, Put a halt to these senseless killings. I do not want any reprisal attacks to happen because, because it was already anticipating there could be reprisal attacks. And once one happens, another will happen. You expect that others will also happen. So this is the problem. But when I talk about peace architecture, I mean that when you look at the history, then you begin to put you know, in a matrix you know, the resolution processes. When an issue like this happens, what do you do? And why do these things happen all the time? So you need a holistic approach. And this peace architecture must be a national one. It's not just something you deal with because there is a conflict in no. Plateau State. If, if you deal with the issue of Hesman, it must be general. It must be holistic across the board, across the country. Who should be a part of this architecture? The, the national thing. The citizens, the citizens, the security agencies, security agencies, stakeholders in communities, traditional rulers, you know, and um, but you how know, do you the government.